Hello everyone, uh, my name is Pedro Maia and I'm here today to talk about the paper from Borobazzi and Albert and the paper is about emergence of scaling in random networks. Okay. So, um, well first of, the reason why this is being studied is because um, systems, at, um, is in the context of complex systems and systems as diverse as the genetic networks or the World Wide Web, they're best described as networks with complex topology. So here you can see a uh, partial map from the internet and the source, right? And here kind of like, these are like some of like the, the main, a main website here connected to all these other peripheral websites, right? And this creates this wonderful complex topology, right? Uh, so, and a common property of many large networks is that the vertex connectivities follow a scale-free power law distribution. So what does that mean exactly? Okay, um, well, so the main idea of the paper is that the probability that a vertex in a network interacts with k other vertices decays as a power law of this kind of type, of this type. And when they mean scale-free, because right here, there is no other scales interacting with this power law. So it doesn't depend on the size of the network. It doesn't depend on uh, the time in which the network is evolving, right? So that is what it means, scale free. There's no other scale, or even it doesn't depend on k, it doesn't depend on time, it doesn't depend on anything, okay? Um, so, and what the, this paper shows is that, um, well, this you can have a graph of this kind of property if you add two generic mechanisms when you create this network. Okay. So, well, to motivate this, Barabazi gives a few examples. So the first, think about um, a network of movie actors, right? And you can think each actor as a vertex and two actors are connected to their cast in the same movie. And the probability that an, that an actor has k length has a power tail for large k. Okay. So here is the, so here's the paper. So you probably looked at this database of actors and which actors are in each movie. And then here's, this is what he means by the tail, right? And so this tail is well explained by a power law. So it's power law, that's why this is in a logarithm axis. So that this this guy, this this exponent here will come as the slope of this line. Okay? And uh, for this particular case, you get a, 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 a gamma of 2.3. Okay, so yeah, makes um, further motivation. Well, it's the World Wide Web, as we talked before. So now each web vertex is a document, right, a link. And uh, edges are links pointing from one document to another, okay? And, uh, and, and people estimate these, th this, this P of K using internet robots that cal try to estimate what are, this prob what are these like probabilities, right? Um, so uh, with these amount of data, then again, log, log axis. And here you get your line, right? And, uh, and an exponent of the year 2.1, okay? Finally, uh, well, what about the electrical power grid of the Western United States? And there, each vertex is a generator, a transformer, or a substation. The edges are the high voltage transmission lines between them. And that's really small compared to the internet, right? But still, if you plot it, you get something really close to a line and the exponent So, okay, so, so th these are the examples that motivate from real networks, but when we are in math, we want to study these properties in like generic families of, of, of networks. So, so one of these, one of the most important families of networks that people study is what they call the erdos rene graph. I'm not sure if I said that right, but for, apologize for that. And so how do you do this? 
how do you construct this this network? Well, you put a bunch of nodes, right? And then um, you basically you say, well, this edge, this connection is included with probability p, right? So every uh, so so there's the same probability for this guy connect with this or with this or with this or any of the guys nearby, okay? And uh, and you construct that and that. And, and, and with this construction, you can create like these families of graphs, and these and these families of graphs, they have very interesting uh, properties that already that you can compute analytically. But there's a problem: is that these guys do not obey power law of scaling. So it's a wonderful family of graphs, which we know a lot of properties, but they don't exhibit these realistic. Um, these yeah, you don't exhibit these like realistic uh, power law of scaling. Okay. So, uh, the question. So, what is so what is missing here? Well, is that basically you start with a fixed number of vertices that are then randomly connected, okay? And you do that without modifying n, okay? So then, if you want to do for a bigger network, well, you just pick a, a set of uh, with more number with more more dots, and you do it again, right? It's not you don't iteratively or continuously increase the size of this network, right? And, uh, and that's actually the one of the problems, that the most real-world networks are open. So what does that mean? Well, they're formed uh, of new vertices, uh, sorry, they're formed by the continuous addition of new vertices to the system. Right, so it starts small, and then people start linking these new guys to what the structure that was there before. So that's an important ingredient. And the other thing is that uh, they assume that the probability that two vertices are connected is random and uniform. So each vertex is good as any other. And but in most real networks, they exhibit what they call preferential connectivity. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, uh, an analogy is that like uh, when a new actor like Saul Goodman enters a show. He doesn't get his own show, right? He enters as a support for a famous actor, right? So it's so it's so the uh, the the probability, right, that Saul Goodman would interact with, with any of these other guys is smaller than the one that he would interact with Heisenberg himself, right? So Heisenberg has more probability because he is the senior actor in the in the show, right? Um, so you want you want to construct that, and then eventually, right, once. Uh, you connected with these guys, then eventually you may get your own show later on, right? Um, so um, the same thing happens with 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 n with like with the web page, right? So if you construct a web page, it will probably include links to uh, connections to more famous pages than the more obscure ones, right? And this also happens on citation of, of scientific papers, where a new paper is more likely to cite uh, a much cited paper than an unknown one. Okay? So, um, this is the spirit of the paper, is that we are going to incorporate, uh, that we're going to incorporate a few ingredients to that family of random graphs so that they start exhibiting. And, and we'll show that the, the realistic scaling property emerges from these ingredients. Okay? So first thing, we're going to assume that the system will grow. So it's not like frozen in time, right? But every time step, we're going to add a vertex that link to m vertices already present in the network, okay? And we're going to include what they call preferential attachment, right? So there's a probability that the probability that a new vertex will connect to an old vertex depends on the connectivity of the old vertex. So that super connected old vertex get more of that probability. Does that make sense? So this is it. Now, um, the calculations that we're not going to do here, but it's in the paper, they basically, so, so remember we're looking at that formula, right, that decay formula, and uh, they can show that with these hypotheses, you can calculate and say, well, the here's the probability that you get, and you remember that the ansatz that, and so this, I can just write it like this. So, and, and the ansatz that we wanted was exactly decay of this form, right? So if you want something like this to have this form, well, then you want this exponent to be equal to this, okay? And then you get the scale three. So then you get this 
gamma equals 3. Right? So this comes out just from adding these ingredients. And that's cool, right? Because, uh, and um, now, if only, so, so those ingredients, they're sufficient and necessary. That means that if you only have one of these ingredients, you won't get the property, okay? So if you only have, so if only have growth without preferred attachment, then you get this K over here and you lose the scale free. See? If you only have the preferred attachment, but you don't add new vertices, then after a while, everyone will be connected. And then again, you lose the power law distribution, right? When, when everyone's connected to everyone, okay? So then the probability is gonna decay because it's constant, okay? And the maximum. So, um, so, so, so this, is, this is really interesting, right? So again, um, one of the ingredient alone is not enough to get the result. You need both of them combined. Now, finally, uh, you're going to say, well, but those networks had like some different numbers. It was not three, right? So there's some, so there's some tweaks that you can do to modify the model to account for different exponents. For example, one idea is to say that only a fraction of the links, only a fraction p of the links is directed. So if you do that, then you can, s you can, you, uh, you get this correction here to the, to your exponent gamma. And then you can hit those 2.1, 2.3 that we saw before, okay? And the other things that you can do is that um, you may want to, you, may, you, you can, uh, that like some networks may evolve by adding or removing connections. So if you add some rules, some ingredients of how you're gonna remove some, some of the old, uh, some of the old connections and how are you gonna modify some of the old connections, you might also get variations on this, on this exponent and maybe a mixture of all these things is what kind of like creates the, the behavior that are not exactly captured by the, lambda equal, uh, by the gamma equals three, but we can get close enough, okay? Well, well, thank you very much for your attention and watch next, James Kennard continue the, uh, uh, the discussion on the topic. Thank you very much.